Hey what's up everyone my name is Thijs and welcome to Dual Wielded. In this devlog I had the first humans you can come across in my game in Cave. A game taking place in an ever expanding Russian cave system where civilians took shelter after nukes were dropped during a fictional cold war. But first I added something else. Death. So you might have seen previous gameplay where I just walk around without any hearts. Yeah, you, you, you can't really die yet. Which, I mean, you know, it isn't that important of a game mechanic. The game could do without dying, of course. Hence why I introduced it so late in the series. Uh, of course. But I made this death animation where our comrade falls and can't get up. You know, uh, oh. Oh, he just got up. The only problem with the way I've set it up right now is that the mole rats kind of still push you around. Okay, so now I'm here, thanks. You also have to be on the ground before you actually die, but uh... Yeah, I mean... So I want the visuals of the game over to have a lot of impact. Because, well, a game over in a roguelite has a lot of impact. Since it's permadeath and you lose your stuff. Dying in other roguelites, like the Binding of Isaac, doesn't have a lot of impact visually. But there are also some other roguelites, like Enter the Gungeon, that feel the same as I do. So when you die there, the game gets like... So I made sure to stop time fully, zoom into the player, get rid of the color and the lights, and make the player feel vulnerable again. By making the scene claustrophobic, and showing that in this small, narrow, dark part of the cave, there is now a new corpse. Just like the others you've come across earlier. Either going to be stripped from all their stuff by the next scavenger to pass by, or eaten by the mutated creatures in the cave. Something I wanted to add since I designed the player's stat UI is that they disappear if they're not necessary to be on screen to make the game feel more immersive. Look at games like Battlefield. It looks absolutely stunning and due to the sound effects and amazing visuals it already makes for a very immersive experience. But strip the screen from all the UI and now it genuinely looks like they've mounted an IMAX Dolby HD camera on a soldier in 1960, making it surprisingly more immersive. I bet all of you watching here were like, oh, damn. Now, do I compare my game to this insanely good looking game Battlefield? No, of course not. In Cave is a lot better, okay? In Cave doesn't currently have a user score, alright? But, but, but so far, I'm the only one who used it, so I guess I could just decide the user score. And I have to be honest, I give In Cave like a, like a 3.4, so... Yeah, take that battlefield. Well, I tried to get a system like this working, where UI would disappear if it isn't necessary. So first, this happened, which, okay. Then this happened, okay. But in the end, it looked weird. I tried removing them both and then separately, but uh, yeah. Maybe with a fade it would work, but because of the bloom effect, the only thing that really happens is the bloom lowering, and that looks a bit stupid as well. I'll come back to this later, but for now, I'll just keep it on screen permanently. So let's get to NPCs. Last devlog I explained the difference between roguelikes and roguelites, where both have permadeath and randomly generated levels, but roguelites also have permanent unlocks. To have unlocks that don't permanently go away after dying could mean that the difficulty curve will look like this, because you'll get permanent upgrades for your character. But the way I decided to tackle this is by the use of NPCs. You'll be able to come across randomly generated NPCs that will all have their own set of skills. You can ask those NPCs to come to your hub, where they can use those skills to help you. For instance, yeah. Jeff over here is a chef. And he makes sure that every third time you enter the dangerous part of the cave, you can start the game with one food item in your inventory. That's just a nice little boost to get yourself started. But if your hub contains three chefs, you can start every run with one food item. I also thought it could be cool to add some NPCs that don't really change a player's run, but change the hub itself. Like there are NPCs with musical instruments that will change the whole vibe of a hub by playing acoustic guitar for instance. Now if you were to have only one chef, what keeps you from constantly dying on purpose to start every actual run with a food item? Well, every time the player dies, all of the NPCs come closer to death themselves. This makes sure that the player won't grind for those boosts. It also leaves more impact when the player dies, but not in an annoying Dark Souls 2 way, where your maximum health just decreases when you die. Oh, looks like you died trying to defeat this boss. Why don't you try it again with uh, less health? 
yes this is an actual feature in that game so i made three different sitting animations one where he's just kind of lying against a wall probably in pain in this one he's panicking and in the third one he's actually kind of just vibing now the dude does look pretty small compared to our comrade actually they're pretty much the same size our comrade just wears a mask has these big pieces of fur covering his shoulders and a giant backpack of which both of the latter make him look pretty buff so if I were to remove the last two attributes, you see that they're pretty similar size actually. Oh my god! I extended the NPC's legs and actually gave him a neck this time, so he looks a bit bigger and also just better in my opinion. And the next thing I added was a dialogue box, allowing the player to listen to the sad tales Victor has to tell. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night, I can feel my leg and my arm. Also, you can kind of play with this corpse, which, uh, you know, it's just an amazing feature I added on purpose. No, but I actually wanted to make it possible for the player to kill the NPC for a chance of a quick loot. So I polished the death a bit, and now the NPC can actually drop food. So yeah, we just killed an innocent man, but at least we have some kasha now, which, not gonna lie, if someone were to hold some kasha in front of me, I'd probably do the same thing. So I upgraded the dialogue system to have different panels of text the player can skip through, and I also animated the text. It's you. Hi. Hi there. The Emperor. And his three sons, dead right under the noses of the Imperial Guard. It's a disgrace. Interesting. See you. Goodbye. So that's it for the progress of this devlog. Next devlog, I probably want to further expand on this system so that the player can actually choose to bring the NPC to the hub area and adding an actual purpose to the NPC. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't yet, and you can join the Discord server where there's currently an emote contest going on to expand the already pretty large amount of emotes. So pretty cool ones already so far and a f Uh yeah, well, see you later, I I guess. <clears throat> Wait a second. If our comrade stole my Wii once. And Andrew has my Wii. What the fuck? What? Wait a minute. Who are you? Yeah, hey, I, I think I found him. Shrek? Always hot, Sabine.